And so the first re next generation sequencing that really came to market was a company called 454. And they have a technique called pyro sequencing. And the way that this works is that you have your DNA molecule and you, as you add a new compound, a new base, um, you actually release a little bit of inorganic phosphate. That's the, the P, so if you add DCTP, the TP actually means it's triphosphate. As you add that C to the end of the chain, you release a bit of, of phosphate, that's one of those Ps. And there's an enzyme called luciferase, which is pretty cool because when it finds a phosphate, it emits light, okay? So it just makes a flash of light. Um, think fireflies. Okay. So pyrosequencing started kind of early 2000s. They had this technology where they could add DCTP, have a PI, have a flash of lu luciferase and detect it. And so the way that they detect it is they use what's called picotiter plates. And the picotiter plates have a very small well that's something like 25 micrometers across. Yeah. And you just get a little bead with some DNA attached to the bead. And then you wash across the top of here either the CTP, the TTP, the ATP, or the GTP one at a time. So you wash across this, the, the CTP. And then on the plate, uh, as you add, for example, DCTP, every well where you add a C gives you a flash of light. Then you wash that off, then you add uh, the ATP, and every well where you add an A gives you a flash of light. And so you have a very high resolution camera that sits looking at this well. And it takes a photo every time you're washing across something. And then you just deconvolute that photo and say, OK, where did I see A's? Where did I see C's? Where did I see G's? Where did I see T's? That's how you do it. So 454 sequencing for a long time was the dominant technology, a long time being about five years. The, it also had some advantages. So it could also do relatively long reads. Um, towards the end of the life of 454, they were getting up to about 750 but typically 500 bases um, onwards. When it started out, by the way, when it started out in the early 2000s, it was about 50 bases. And through changing the technology, through changing the enzymes, through changing the, um, the reagents that they used, they got it from 50 bases up to about 500 bases. Okay. So it was relatively long read. Um, it was uh, relatively quick to do the sequencing. Um, in the sense that it would be about 7 to 12 hours. And it would generate about 500 megabases um, to a gigabase of sequence. 